Um, we've become we've become addicted to the chosen, uh, the 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 TV series that's out, uh, finishing season two tonight, and uh, it's the life of Christ and. We're, we're two seasons in. Is there going to be seven? Is that right? Or eight seasons? Yeah. And so anyway, uh, we've gone back and watched those over and over and over and over and over again. And every time we see something new in them, and, uh, and it, it works like that as we're reading God's Word. I've read through the Word many, many, many times over the years of being a follower of Christ. And yet every time I pick it up, God reveals something new to me. It's not, it's not new, it's just new to me, and uh, so I'm excited about that. So uh, take advantage of that, uh, the, the live uh, uh, videos that are out there on Facebook and on our YouTube channel, and um, uh, go back and watch. If you have to miss, you're out of town on vacation or something, or you're sick, uh, you can watch there online and uh, know that that's there. All right, we're going to release the children to go to the back with Margot. And uh, looks like Judy's going. Appreciate you ladies so very much. All right, I'm going to switch microphones here. They're getting them organized and corralled. And, um, I'm already a little echoey in the monitor here. Eli, if you can pull me back just a little bit. I'm feeling I'm going to get loud this morning. Good morning. Welcome to Life Church in Humansville. It's good to see everyone this morning. Uh, I know it's always a little odd when I start by greeting you again, sometimes for the second or third time, uh, but remember that uh, just the preaching portion of the mess of the services is being recorded and put out online. Uh, once we're able to get some musicians into place, uh, then we'll be able to do the music. If we're performing it live, we have the copyright licenses and video licenses to be able to do that. But if it's recorded, we can't because of copyright law. So if you ever wondered why we don't put the music out there, that's why. When we get a, a worship team together, a band together, and we're able to do things live, uh, the whole format will change as far as what goes out online. So welcome to all of you that are watching online today. I am super excited today, especially for those that are watching online. Uh, last week, we went to Kansas City last Monday and um, visited my sister, and my brother Brian was there. Uh, I don't know if I, I Margo and I were trying to decide, I don't think that I've seen him, talked to him since my dad's funeral, which was over three years ago. So, uh, you know, for, for whatever reasons. Anyway, he was there, and he told me that he had been watching our services online. And I had absolutely no idea that he was doing that. And uh, it, not only could he, did he tell me that he was watching it, but then he proceeded to tell me what I had preached the day before, uh, title of the message and some points of the message, and I was like, wow, I'm super excited. So, uh, hello, Brian. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're watching, and uh, thank you for being part of that. Uh, this morning, I received a call from uh, one of my, uh, this is, this is my, my family, my stepmom's sister's husband, and uh, so an uncle, indirectly that way, and hadn't seen or heard from him probably since my dad's funeral, and um, he called and said, will you be praying for me this week? I have to have some surgery, and I, I've got some cancer, and it's not, a, it's not a good thing, and would you pray for me? And, I said, and uh, so I prayed with him right then, right there on the phone, and I told him that we would be praying for him as well, so uh, if you will remember and pray for Harold, that would be great as well. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that we now have people watching from coast to coast, from North Carolina to California. And so that's exciting. We know Carol out in California has been with us for a long, long time, one of the original watchers online. And uh, then Lana that used to be here with us in Humansville is now in North Carolina. We know that she's watching. And who knows 
who all in between north and south and east and west and even beyond the borders of the United States might be watching and hearing the good news of Jesus Christ this morning from Humansville, Missouri. Glory. That's exciting to me. Those of you watching, do me a favor. Listen, I say this every week, but few of you do it. So those watching online, I want you to take your cell phone or your tablet or whatever it is, and I want you to make a comment down below uh, that you're watching and where you're watching from, because that encourages us, and it lets us know that what we're doing is making a difference. And so if you're watching from Minnesota or New York or Texas or California or Portland or wherever, you tell us where you're watching from, and uh, we want to uh, just greet you and, and thank you for being here. I mentioned uh, here at the very beginning, we've got a big event coming up in September, uh, the end of September, but listen, things like this take a lot of preparation, a lot of planning, and uh, so we want to get the word out as quickly as possible, <clears throat> excuse me, so you can plan to join us. So I, I'm using this phrase right now, I don't know if this is what we're going to officially call it, but Big Tent Revival is coming to Humansville, Missouri, September 26th through the 29th. Now, as I, yeah, as I was writing that out this morning, I remembered that there's a Christian music group called Big Tent Revival. That's not who we're talking about, okay? Now, if they want to come, you know, come on. But um, we're talking about setting up a big uh, crusade-type tent in the, in the field out here next to the church uh, and having a wonderful time of, of services dedicated to preaching the word, praying for the sick, believing for miracles, and um, I'm super excited about it. At this point, I'm planning on preaching that Sunday morning, and then um, Pastor Dwayne Maynard from Tag Church in Little Rock, shout out to Little Rock, will be here with us again for Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and however many more nights after that, the Lord decides that we need to, uh, to keep going. Uh, we're believing and praying for an incredible time. We're preparing. This is our faith. Hey, Kirk, how many we got here this morning? 54. Yeah, where is everybody just sleeping in today? We, we do this 54 to 65. Once in a while, we'll get up close to 70. Anyway, uh, so we have 54 here today. We're believing for four to 500 people to be at Tent Revival. Amen? So be praying about that. Uh, plan to be here, plan to help spread the word, and plan to be witness to miracles and salvations and healings and baptisms and deliverance and all of that good stuff that God does. Amen? Amen. Um, I have put in my notes that the video guys were going to put up a post of the, uh, the tent revival uh, board back there, but talking to them ahead of time, I realized that um, that can't happen. So Mike's going to post it uh, on the church Facebook page or Someplace right there will be easy to find. Uh, there's a way for everyone to be part of helping with the expense of that. So those watching online, find that. It's a green poster board with pink squares all over it. Look at that. Find something that you can help us with financially on that, and then go to givetolifechurch.com, and it will happen. For those of you here in the house today, remember tonight we're uh, gathering together up at Osceola First Assembly for their fireworks celebration, and uh, I, I pass it. I pass it. I I messaged Pastor Danny this morning, and I said, "What's your weather contingency? Because there's rain in the forecast." And he said, "We're doing it." And he said, "If it's raining when it's time to do fireworks, then we won't do the fireworks. But we're going to gather together at 5:30 and share an amazing meal together, and then uh, the service will start around seven o'clock." Uh, some of you have experienced the ministry of Teen Challenge right here at Life Church. So Teen Challenge men and women will be uh, there to uh, minister for a period of time. And then the weather permitting, uh, around, around dusk, we'll go outside and, uh, and watch a fireworks display. So we're going to, Margo and I are going. I made a big old pan of tater salad and, and some other salad to take. And so uh, it's right next to Osceola Cheese, okay? So yeah. Yeah. if you forget to bring something, run into Osceola Cheese, get some smoked Swiss and cheddar, okay? Smoked Swiss and cheddar, that's the best cheese in Osceola Cheese, and so, okay. Um, 
last week I shared a message with you entitled, Speak to That Mountain. And in it, I encouraged you, based on the words of Jesus, that if you have even the smallest amount of faith, you can say to your mountain, whatever obstacle, whatever challenge, whatever difficulty that you face, you can speak to that mountain and say to it, be moved from here to there. And according to God's word, according to the teachings of Jesus, it will be done. Now, that's a pretty amazing thing. I'm just going to I'm just going to make a disclaimer here. I, I haven't I haven't gone down to to uh, Branson or or the Smoky Mountains or or out to Colorado the Rocky Mountains and said you know Pikes Peak, pick up from there and go over there, and seen it happen. I've I've just not ever seen that happen. But I'm I'm here to tell you that under the anointing and the unction of the Holy Spirit, we can have faith to believe for the impossible to happen. I don't know that I don't know that specifically uh, Jesus was saying, "Tell that mountain to move and it's going to." He was saying, "Speak to that thing that is a hindrance to you, that's in your path, that keeps you from all that God has for you. Speak to that thing, even if it is the size of a mountain, and if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, it'll be moved. And so uh, that, that, that's exciting to me. But I, uh, I saying all of that about speaking to the mountain, I also believe there are times in life when we need to do more than speak to the mountain. There will be times in this life when we're going to need to shout at that mountain, or today's title, shout at that wall. There will be times in our walk of faith that we need to speak to an issue in faith and there will be times in our walk of faith when we will need to shout with a voice of triumph. Hello? I'm going to explain here in just a moment. We're going to be in Joshua chapter 6 this morning if you want to find that. Here's the deal. Uh, oh, some of you probably get so tired of me. Um, when, when, the, when the chiefs are down to... 30 seconds on the clock. And we're playing the Denver Bronco. I mean the Denver Donkeys. <laughs> and, and the score is, you know, 20 to 21. We're down by a point and we're right there on the line. And if we can just get in or if we can just kick a field goal, we're going to have the victory. Listen, I am not sitting on my couch going, Okay, Pat, you can do this. Come on. I, I trust you. You're faithful. You've, you've, you've shown yourself able. You've worked, you've worked the impossible situation on that field before. Go, Pat, go. No. Some of you have been at my house. Tina's sitting back there going, dude's crazy. Listen, I am up on my feet, or at bare minimum, on the edge of my seat right? Screaming at the TV because somehow screaming at the TV, Patrick can hear me, you know. Don't throw it that way. Throw it this way, right? I'm sure you can. So, okay. So sometimes, sometimes, you know, when they're working their way down the field, I'm talking. I'm speaking to the TV. But when we get into the red zone, when we get into that do or die situation, I'm done talking. All right, let's look and see what God's word has to say about that. We're going to go to the book of Joshua, chapter 6. Let me give you a little bit of background as you're turning there and finding this passage. If you've been around the church long at all, you're familiar with the story. Um, this is not going to be some, you know, big light light switch, light coming on, light bulb moment, I don't think. But sometimes we need to be brought back to the basics and reminded so that we can function the way God intended us to. So Moses has died. Joshua has been told by God uh, that it's time for him to lead the children of Israel across the Red Sea, or I'm sorry, across the Jordan River and into the promised land. In chapter one Joshua of Joshua, God tells Joshua, Wherever you step your foot, wherever you place your foot, I'm going to give you 
that land. It will be yours. He tells Joshua in chapter 1, no one will ever be able to stand against you. He tells Joshua in chapter 1, I will be with you. Any of this sound familiar? We've heard all of these promises, similar promises to these in the New Testament. God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. Three times in chapter 1 alone, God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. I need to come back and preach on that. Strong and courageous. And and then after you get past chapter 1, he's going to hear it more times. Be strong and courageous. And then God tells Joshua, listen, listen, follow my instructions carefully. I'm going to tell you how you're going to win the victory. I'm going to tell you how you're going to possess the land. I'm going to tell you how you're going to uh, go in and take the city. But it's going to happen as you follow my instructions carefully. In this first part of Joshua, he says, don't turn to the right or to the left. We hear that phrase often here at Life Church in messages of tongues and interpretation. Don't turn to the left. Don't look to the right. Keep your eyes fixed on me. Look ahead. Stay, stay true. Sometimes we, ask, we may be asking ourselves the question, why do we keep hearing that same message? And the answer is very easy. The answer is that as human beings, we are prone to turn to the right or to the left. We uh, uh, turn right, turn left. It often happens when we don't see things playing out like we would like to see them play out or like we think they should play out. But it, it doesn't even have to be a challenging time when we turn to the right or the left. It doesn't have to be a difficult time. The fact of the matter is, we human beings are like sheep, and, and we stray, like sheep stray. So here's the, here's the answer. Why do we keep hearing the same, don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left? The reason why we keep seeing, hearing that is because we haven't learned yet not to turn to the light, right, not to turn to the left. Another phrase that God has been speaking into this church, especially into my heart over the last three and a half plus years Stay the course, stay the course, stay the course. That's another way of saying, don't turn to the right, don't turn, don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. Stay the course. Keep your eyes on me. Follow me, follow me, follow me. God says to Joshua, follow my instructions carefully and meditate on the word. And when you follow my instructions carefully, and when you meditate upon my word, then you will prosper. Then you will experience the victory. Then you will walk in my favor and my blessing when you follow my instructions. When you follow my instructions and you meditate on my word, you will have the victory. So the story continues in chapter 2 of Joshua. He sends some spies out to the land of Jericho, uh, uh, to the city of Jericho, to, to kind of figure out how and when and if and everything as far as the attack can, uh, and, the, and the conquest can go. And when the spies get there, a prostitute, of all people, named Rahab, protects the spies from the king who has heard that they have come into his kingdom and with the purpose of spying it out so he can, they can take word back to Joshua on what is the best plan of attack. And so this king wants to kill them before they can take report back to Joshua, but this prostitute protects them. She hides them. Listen, God can use prostitutes to fulfill his plan. And if he can use a prostitute to fulfill his plan and his purpose, if he can use a prostitute to protect his people, I, I would 
guess that he can probably use you and me as well. God works a miracle for the children of Israel when they uh, begin to cross the Jordan. The river dries up. They cross on dry ground. Listen, I have no doubt in my mind that God did that on purpose. He did it on purpose and for a purpose. You see, the purpose was that uh, they needed to be reminded that God was able to do the impossible. And, and no doubt uh, these, these uh, folks that are crossing, no doubt they have heard the stories of when God uh, released the people of, of God out of bondage in Egypt, and they came to the Red Sea, and Pharaoh's coming up on their back, and they're like, we're going to die out here in the wilderness, and God said, I got a plan. And he parts the sea, and a, th- a million plus people walk across on, dar- on dry ground, And they get to the other side, and Pharaoh's still coming, and God says, I still have a plan. And it closes up on them, and the people, they're safe on the other side. God, He brought them to that river, caused it to dry up so they could walk across on dry ground to remind them of what he had already done in their past. This was a new generation of people. Maybe they didn't witness the Red Sea miracle. Maybe they were just children. The miracle of the Jordan was to build their faith so that God could use them in what would appear to be an impossible situation. Then they cross the Jordan. This is still the giving you the context here. They cross the Jordan, and Joshua orders all of the men to be circumcised, reestablishing their covenant with God. Re-identifying as we are God's people and we're going to live for his honor and for his glory we're going to follow his instructions and follow them carefully okay then on their way to Jericho Joshua encounters what he thinks is a man but the scripture says that uh, he Joshua discovers that this is not just a man this is the commander of of the Lord's army. Now, I don't know about you, but I can see very quickly God working in the hearts, the minds, the spirit of his people in preparation for what is about to happen, the victory that's going to come, what he's going to ask them to do, because you know what you know what happens when God asks you to do something? Yeah, well, you better do it, but when God asks you to do something, usually it's a little bit outside your comfort zone. If what God is asking, what God is asking you to do isn't outside of your comfort zone, isn't outside of your own ability, that's not God. He's, he's notorious for asking people to do the unusual, to do the impossible, to do the thing that you think there is no way in the world that you can do that. You're absolutely right. There isn't any way in the world you can do that. The commander of the Lord's army, right there in front of him. And now God is going to speak to him and say, I want you to take the city. And I went off and left my New Living Translation Bible at home. So today I'm going to read with you off the screen, because if I read this, it's not going to match. So listen as we read um, Joshua chapter 1. Uh, Sorry, Joshua chapter 6, starting in verse 1. Here we go. Uh, Get them bifocals at the right angle. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut up because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go in or to go out. But the Lord, capital L, said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all its strong warriors. Now, the chapter could stop right there because God's already told him, I've already done it. You and your fighting men should march around the city once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you are to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. When, the, when you hear the priests give a long blast on the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can, Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people will charge straight into the town. 
So Joshua called together the priests and said, Take up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant and assign seven priests to walk in front of it, each carrying a ram's horn. When he, then he gave orders to the people, march around the town, and the armed men will lead the way in, the, in, front of the Lord, in front of the ark of the Lord. After Joshua spoke to the people, the seven priests with the ram's horns started marching in the presence of the Lord. Whew. <clears throat> Blowing the horns as they marched, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed behind them. Some of the armed men marched in front of the priest with the horns and some behind the ark with the priest continually blowing the horns. Do not shout or do not even talk, Joshua commanded. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout. Then shout. Hold on just a second. Sometimes we get our... This is going to sound familiar. Sometimes we get ourselves into such a mess... Because we don't know when to keep our mouths shut. Seems like there was a message I preached just a couple, two or three weeks back about fighting battles. There are some battles that you were never intended to fight. Shut up. Just, just like, you know what? That one's not mine. Lord, you just take that one. I'm going to give that one to you, Lord. You fight that battle. I'm telling you what. You will add years to your life and peace to your heart and mind if you'll just shut up. That was for free. So the ark of the Lord was carried around the town once that day, and then everyone returned to spend the night in the camp. Joshua got up early the next morning. The priests again carried the ark of the Lord. The seven priests with the ram's horn marched. Notice the detail here. Exactly how they were told to do it. Uh, the seven priests with the ram's horn marched in front of the ark of the Lord, blowing their horns. Again, the armed men marched both in front of the priest with their horns and behind the ark of the Lord. All this time, the priests were blowing their horns. On the seventh day, they, were, they again marched around the town once. Uh, second day, sorry. Second day, marched around the town uh, once, returned to camp. They followed this pattern for six days. On the seventh day, I knew it was coming. On the seventh day, the Israelites got up at dawn, marched around the town as they had done before, but this time they went around the town seven times. The seventh time around, as the priests sounded the long blast on their horns, Joshua commanded the people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the town. Jericho and everything in it must be completely destroyed as an offering to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and the others in her house will be spared, for she protected our spies. Do not take any of the things set apart for destruction or you yourselves will be completely destroyed. Notice the detail. And you will bring trouble on the camp of Israel. Everything made from silver, gold, bronze, or iron is sacred to the Lord and must be brought into his treasury. When the people heard the sound of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could. Suddenly, the walls of Jericho collapsed, and the Israelites charged straight into the town and captured it. They completely destroyed everything in, in it with their swords, men, women, young, old, cattle, sheep, goats, and donkeys. See, God doesn't even like the Denver Broncos. Meanwhile, Joshua said to the two spies, keep your promise, go to the prostitute's house, bring her out along with all of her family. The men who had been spies went into and brought out Rahab, her father, mother, brothers, and all who other relatives who were with her, they moved her whole family to a safe place near the camp of Israel. Then the Israelites burned the town and everything in it. Only the things made from silver, gold, bronze, or iron were kept, from the, kept for the treasury of the Lord's house. So Joshua was spared Rahab the prostitute and her relatives who were with her in the house because she had hidden the spies Joshua sent to Jericho 
And she lives among the Israelites to this day. It's what happens when you follow God's plan. At that time, Joshua invoked this curse. May the curse of the Lord fall on anyone who tries to rebuild the town of Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn son, he will lay its foundation. At the cost of his younger son, he will set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his reputation spread throughout the land. Glory. Lord, we're going to spend just a few quick moments looking at a couple of things here that I believe you want us to see. So I ask you to help us to focus, help us to receive from your word today in Jesus' name. Three points. First thing that we need to learn from this, God's instructions. Let me remind you that earlier in this message, God spoke to Joshua and instructed him to follow his commands in detail. He told him not to wander to the left or to the right, but to stay focused, stay the course. Again, God is giving Joshua some very, very specific instructions. And it's amazing to me, if you think about it, God was preparing Joshua for the upcoming battle. He encourages Joshua to be strong and courageous. He told Joshua the importance of following his commands his instructions in detail. He taught Joshua the importance of staying focused. Listen, on our Wednesday night study that we're doing right now on surviving the wilderness, we've talked about how the wilderness is a time and place of preparation. It's a place of equipping. Why? Because what God has in your future, in the next season of your life, will require far greater faith than what you have today. God doesn't just let us exist. We don't just float through life. He wants to keep taking us from glory to glory, from place to place, from miracle to miracle, from, from this thing that he had purpose and plan for to this thing. He has a plan. Our past helps us, it encourages us, uh, we can use it as a, as a testimony for the goodness and the faithful of God, but, faithfulness of God, but it's a, it's a preparation and a, a planning and equipping us for what is yet to come. And the greater faith, our greater faith comes by being closer and closer to God and hearing his word. This is what God told Joshua right from the beginning, I have given you Jericho. Not I might, not I will, but I have. He told him, I have given you Jericho's king. Not I might, but I have. He has, uh, God told Jericho, I've given you all its strong warriors. God gave uh, Joshua a, a word before the battle even began, that it was already accomplished in his plan, in his order, in his direction, in his instruction. All Joshua had to do was follow the instruction manual. Now, I want to point out to you, lest you think that this was some easy conquest for Joshua and the children of Israel, I, I want to show you a picture of what ancient Jericho looked like. And so from back there, you might, might have to, you know, move closer or pull it up on the internet. But in this particular illustration, it shows one, there was an upper wall and a lower wall and a ditch, a, 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 a dirt wall here, if you will, uh, and then a ditch that surrounded it. And, and so this was a fortified city. It was not an easy conquest to just go up and take the city. The walls were large enough, we know, to race chariots around on top. This large ditch around it, you know, you don't, you don't want to get down below your enemy where they can shoot down at you, so that wouldn't have been a good thing. By fortified, we know that it had double walls, lower enough. It wasn't a city that could easily or would easily fall under attack, and yet God told Joshua the city was already his. Is there anything too hard for God? 
the battle was already won. But there were specific instructions for taking the city. For six days, as we just read, they were to march in silence around the city one time each day following the priest who would be uh, uh, leading the ark and soldiers before and behind. Then on day seven, seven times around, again, everyone saying nothing. Priests blowing the trumpets, but everybody quiet. Then on the seventh time around, when the priest blew the loud blast on the trumpets, the people were to shout as loud as they could. And the walls will collapse. It sounds crazy. It sounds impossible. But God. Point number two. How does Joshua respond to God's instructions? Joshua had a choice to make. Just like you and I have a choice to make every day of our lives. Joshua had a choice to make. He could father, he could follow God's instructions to the letter to every detail. Or he could try to do things his way. Wow. You already see where I'm headed with that, right? Joshua calls together the priest. He gives them the instructions. Then he speaks to the people, tells them every detail of how the victory is going to come. And the next morning, they all get up and begin the process. Now, if we tried something like this today, we would probably fail on day one. <laughs> right? Immediately, somebody would start murmuring and complaining. This is the stupidest thing we've ever done. Why are we following this guy anyway? He's such a goof. We've never done it this way before. Doesn't he know that this is not how you win battles? No one has ever defeated their enemy doing it this way. You watch and see. This is going to be the biggest disaster. It has disaster written all over it. Hello? Joshua must have been some kind of leader. Better, better leader than I am, or most pastors are, right? Because somehow he got all of the people to follow the instructions that God had given him to the T. We have, huh? Yeah, well, come on, girl. She said getting that many people not to even just say a word was impossible. We have 54 people here today, and I'll bet each and every one of us have our own ideas on how to do it, right? Round and round they go, each day just as they had been instructed. Seventh day rolls around. Now we'll see if they can follow through with God's plan all the way to the victory. Remember we talked about that looking to the right or to the left thing? Far too often, we get so close to the victory, and then we look to the left or look to the right, and we miss. We lose. As I'm saying that, I'm reminded, remember Peter's great faith? In the midst of the storm, here comes Jesus walking on the water. Waves are splashing, and wind's blowing, hoop and holler. They think it's a ghost, you know, middle of the night. And Peter says, well, if it's you, let me come. Jesus says, come on, boy. And he steps out of the boat. Da, 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 da. And then what's he say? What's the word? And he, he saw the wind and the waves. He looked to the left. He looked to the right. And what did he do? He was, he was so close to being with Jesus on the water. You know, they could have been, you know, skipping across the, the, the water. Uh, you know, who knows what would have happened if he would have made it all the way out there to where Jesus was. But instead, he looked to the left, he looked to the right. Glug, 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 glug. So seven times around, all the people are silent. Only the ram's horns are being blown. Only the priests are making the noise. Finally, the long blast of the trumpet. Finally, the people can shout. We've been quiet for six days, seven days. Can you imagine? Some of you with uh, phone ministries. Can you imagine not having your phone for seven days? <laughs> Finally, the people can shout, but it's not just a shout. It must be a shout as loud as they can. And when they shout, when they do, the miracle is manifested. The impossible happens. Listen, sometimes just speaking 
to your mountain isn't going to be enough. It's, that's, that's the beginning. That's the first step of faith. And sometimes that'll be all it takes. Devil, you're a liar, and I stand against you in the name of Jesus. I bind you, and I cast you out. Boom. But there may be times when you're going to have to shout. There may be times when you're going to have to get loud. Sometimes we're going to have to move outside of our comfort zone and raise our hands and raise our voices, raise our hallelujah so loud that even our own doubt can't hear over our shout. I started to say this in, in, the, in the worship time. Listen, one thing the devil hates is hearing God's people praise God. When the devil begins to mess up your day, just start singing. Oh, how I love Jesus. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You don't even have to sing on key. Oh, how I love Jesus. To me, he is so wonderful. Man, that's like pouring salt on a slug. The devil hates that. As soon as it starts, as soon as he starts messing with your day, as soon as you start feeling that attitude of being, you know, it's going to be a bad day. No. To God be the glory, great things he has done. I mean, whatever your, whatever your genre is, you know, sing it out loud and proud. Don't let the devil have the victory before you even have a chance. Listen. Lord Jesus, the devil's really being mean to me today. And I just don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. Jesus. Now, sometimes that may be just enough. But other times you're going to have to get radical. Scripture's full of indications that throughout mankind's history, man has shouted with a loud voice. And if you got your little bulletin there, on the back, get ready. Here comes all of these scriptures for you. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey. See, Jesus even rode on the donkeys. Riding on a donkey's colt. Listen. Shout. Well, what do the, the people think that I'm crazy? Listen, they already think you're crazy. <laughs> Give them some evidence. Anybody who proclaims Jesus as Lord and Savior, listen, they already think you're whacked. They already think you elevator don't go to the top. They already think you're handicapped, that you're weak, that you're the... Listen. Who cares what they think? I, I know I'm not going to get to do this. My flesh on the day of the rapture, while we're shooting out of here like a rocket, my flesh, oh, Lord Jesus, if I could have one thing, let me look back and say, I told you so. Right? That's not going to happen. I'm going to be too focused on him. But Numbers chapter 10. Verse 35, whenever the ark set out, Moses would shout, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. <laughs> if you're a child of God, your enemies are God's enemies. That'd be a good way to start the day. Arise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Let them flee from before you. First Samuel 4, verse 4 and 5. So they sent out to Shiloh to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord of uh, the, to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord of heaven's armies who is enthroned between the cherubim, the son of Eli. All, they went out to get. Okay, here we come. When all the Israelites saw the ark of the covenant of the Lord coming into the camp, their shout of joy was so loud it made the ground shake. I hear the sound of dry bones rattling. 
right? Go Chiefs. Nobody wants a cheerleader like that. Okay. There, you can't, you can't, I'm not a very good actor, okay? So, and I hate role playing. You know, when you get in those things and job trainings and different, and they want you to role play. Right? No. Okay. But listen, when, when the Broncos kick off that football, and it goes flying across the field, and Tyreek takes it in the end zone, and he tucks it right there, and you know he's got it. And he bolts this way, and he dodges that one, and next thing you know, he's at the 50, and you can see that it's wide open. I'm not going, go, Tyreek. Go! <laughs> right? I'm, I'm warming up. I'm preparing for the rest. Go, go, go. Listen, if this body gets that high up off the ground, I'm excited. They shouted so loud that made the ground shake. When was the last time somebody praised the Lord so radically that it caused the heavens and the earth to quake? Psalm chapter 20. Verses 4 through 6. May he grant your heart's desire and make your plans succeed. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Now I know the Lord rescues his anointed king. He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. Glory! Glory! Sometimes during worship, I can't just stand here. And I just, you know, it's like, spirit break out. <laughs> Psalm 27, 6. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Psalm 47, verse 1 through 3. Come, everyone, clap your hands. Shout to God with a joyful noise. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is the great King of all the earth. He subdues the nations before us, putting our enemies beneath our feet. Mm. You just need to <clears throat> stomp the devil. A little twist in the middle of it. Like you're squishing a bug. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's time. <laughs> maybe you've been talking to your wall or speaking to your mountain long enough. Hmm. Maybe all you're talking is, I, is, is, is attaching it to you. you. You've taken ownership and possession of it. Maybe it's time to stop speaking to your mountain and start shouting at your mountain. There's a song that I used to listen to back in the 80s. This is not spiritual at all, so just buckle up. A song I listened to back in the 80s. I don't remember the words. I don't remember who sang it. I, don't, I definitely know it's not a Christian song. But the words said, shout, shout, let it all out. Oh, some of you were there with me. All right. Maybe it's time to stop being so reserved. There's a time and a place for that. Don't misunderstand me. Maybe it's time to stop worrying about what the person sitting next to you might think if you get a little exuberant. Maybe it's time to shout at that situation in the name of Jesus. And when you shout, maybe, just maybe, God will give you the victory. That's point three. Who this is taking longer than I thought. 
Verses 20 and 21, when the people heard the sound of the ram's horn, they shouted as loud as they could, and suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed. The Israelites charged straight into the town. No reservation, nothing held up there. Baby, they went in and did what they came to do. Captured it, they completely destroyed everything with their swords. When God gives you the victory, listen, when he gives you the victory, God gives you the complete victory. My God is not a half-based, uh, not in the half-based, halfway business. He does everything well, everything perfect, everything complete. My God does the impossible. Glory. My God does the incredible. My God does the supernatural. My God delivered people from slavery, parted a Red Sea, fed a million people plus for over 40 years in the desert, conceived a baby and an old citizen's couple. Uh, Some of you folks that are retired and up there in those 70s and so, how would you like God to just bless you with a new baby? (laughs) Woo, glory. I'm 55 and I don't want to go there. Conceived the Savior of the world in the womb of a virgin girl. That's my God. Is there anything he can't do? Let me me challenge you. Let me challenge you. I got a thousand bucks for the person that can show me something God can't do. There is nothing, nothing too hard for our God. Now, it's easy for us to say that. Nothing, too, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing is too difficult for thee. It's easy to sing it, but do we believe it? It's easy to sing it, but do we believe it? You think your mountain is too big for God? You don't know my God. You think your wall is too tall for God? You don't know my God. You think your problem, your situation, your circumstance, your health, your finances, your relationship is too hard for God? You don't know my God. I know the creator of the universe. I know the giver of life. I know the one who has all power and authority. And here's what's exciting. He's given us as his followers that same power and authority. We can live and move and walk in the same power and authority as almighty God. Maybe it's time to stop playing with God and stop saying one thing but believing something else. Maybe it's time to stop holding out. Maybe it's time to sell out. Are you ready to shout at the walls? Are you ready to shout at the walls? Now remember last week we talked about you have to identify the enemy. You have to know what your wall is. You have to know what your mountain is. So I'm wrapping up here. You need to be identifying your wall. You need to be identifying your mountain. And then we need to find out, are you ready to shout at the walls? Are you ready to shout at that mountain and say, enough is enough. I'm taking back my stuff. I'm tired of depression. I'm tired of anxiety. I'm tired of fear. I'm tired of loneliness. I'm tired of being wore out. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being this, that, fill in the blank, whatever it is. I'm tired of it. Enough's enough. And I'm going to get back what God has for me. You know what he has for you? He has joy and peace and happiness and forgiveness and provision. and all. That was not tongues. That was a... There's so much that he has for us. That's good. That song said, Karen Wheaton, in that first song we did, she said, take him back my dance. Well, we're Christians. We don't dance. David danced before the Lord. Uh, uh, la, 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 la. I can't think of his name. Anyway, black preacher guy that I listen to sometimes. He said, he said, we didn't have to give up dancing. We just have to change partners. Dance with, dance with Jesus, right? Enough's enough. I'm ready to shout at walls. I'm ready to join my faith with your faith and watch God do a miracle that maybe has been years and years and years in the making, but my faith has been weak or my focus has been wrong, but today I'm ready to shout. 
If you have a mountain or a wall in your life that has been hindering what God wants to do in and through you, today we're going to pray. And I want you to come. I want you to come and begin to stand across the front here. You know what happens? It always takes one person to move. So somebody be bold. Somebody be, uh, be, be the first one. Ask God to give you a double portion. But there's something in your life that you need God to take out so that you can have the victory. I want you to come and pray with me this morning that the mountains and the walls will be gone. The guys in the sound booth are going to play this song. Going up to the high places. Not too loud, but don't be shy either. Going up to the high places. We're going to go up to the high. We're going to tear down the kingdoms of darkness, the kingdoms of the devil, the walls that have been built, and we're going to declare victory today in Jesus' name. If there's something you want to pray about, that you want to declare freedom and liberty and deliverance over, I want you to come. Come on. Everybody's good? My, my, my. My, my, my. Tired of the mountain. Tired of the walls that separate me, to keep me from God's victory. Today is the day of victory in Jesus' name. Listen, I'm just going to tell you, listen, if, if you're just going to pray a little pammy pammy prayer, you might as well go sit back down. I'm going to come and pray with you, but you're going to pray too. I want you to pray out loud to God. I want you to declare, declare the victory. I want you to shout at that mountain, shout at that wall, and say, God, enough's enough. I want the victory.
The name above all names is Jesus. Jesus. King of kings and Lord of lords, his name is Jesus. Jesus. J-E-S-U-S 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 King of King King of King Lord of Lord Lord of Lord Jesus 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 Hey, let's put a cherry on top. Eli, uh, go back to that first song in worship, and uh, let's just declare it, rub the devil's nose in it one more time, and say enough is enough. We're not going to put up with this anymore. We have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll sing this last song, uh, then you can consider yourselves dismissed after that. Remember, uh, we're meeting up at Osceola tonight at 530. There won't be any youth here tonight. We'll be up there. See you Wednesday night otherwise, all right? All right, God bless you.